Hello everyone, this is Etho. We're at the lab right now. I made a little bit of a boo-boo with this uh, thing here. This is the very end of the water stream. There's no sign holding the water in place. Get out of here, chicken. And so when I flooded the pads the other day above, the water extended and it flowed into my lava I had there and turned it into obsidian. So I'm just going to fix that really quick here. Much better. There we go. So I had a pretty good day today. I got a shout out from uh, Captain Sparkles. That was pretty cool. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, like uh, Dot Gam, Co-Star, and Captain Sparkles are about my favorite commentators for Minecraft. So now all three of them have given me mention in at least one of their videos. So that's kind of uh, that makes me very happy. So that's cool. Welcome everybody who's visiting me from. Jordan's channel and also I want to give a especially a big thanks to everybody who left comments like Etho is awesome on uh, Captain Sparkle's video there that was cool there was a lot of them I was impressed thanks guys so I did end up reverting back here I got rid of the spider the spider thing I built the other day because it wasn't working we have to do something different I, at the moment, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. I kind of don't think I'm going to be doing a spider-only spawning system. My current thoughts are just to have like my standard water canals with the spider option. I'll have the 6x6 pads, and I'll probably have like four of them. Let's pretend these are 6x6 pads. Mobs will go to the center with the water canals. I'll probably have lighting on the outside and the spider option will pop out of the floor of those half slabs and I may make it a spider only thing but I don't really think it's worth it to be honest uh, unless I make a really huge spawning system it's just not going to be able to keep up because spiders only spawn one quarter of the time so not even one quarter of the time. So, probably need a huge system if I was to make it a spider only thing. Because, like for tall mobs, you have zombies, skeletons, and creepers. That's three different types of mobs. So, let's say that's. So, that's like 75% of the mobs, and then spiders are the other 25%. And if it's only spiders, then your spawning is a lot lower than if you have like the other three spawning or all four of them together you know so I kinda don't think it's worth it but I want your guys' input should I bother with it uh, uh, or do you have any other ideas cuz I would like to know from you I'm gonna take a break from it this episode though I'll wait for your feedback I kinda wanna do something fun today something random and I have an idea I will meet you at a little uh, work area. Somewhere flat we can work. Alright, here we are at one of my preferred working areas in my world because it's nice and flat. Some of you might recognize where we are. And uh, I'll just quickly run through the idea I had today. Something fun I wanted to try make. Uh, a lot of people seem to like to download my world. I constantly get requests for me to put new versions of my world up for download. And every once in a while when I re release my world for download again, I'll put in a little something fun for people to make it a little more interesting for everyone that downloads my world. And I kind of want to add more interesting things in my world when people download it that they can play around with. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. I had the idea that I would make like a trivia mini game thing and every time I put my world up for download I'll 
add new trivia questions and people can play a mini game if they want. Uh, you'll get a better idea pretty quick here. So every time I'd put my world up for download, I would pick a new theme for the trivia questions. So let's say our theme is Seinfeld. So I'd have a sign that says Seinfeld is our theme. Really, I could pick any, any theme. It could be questions about Minecraft. It could be math questions, science questions, you know movie questions, anything, anything I want, anything you guys want. Okay, so Seinfeld's our theme, then uh, there would be a list of questions, so let's say our first question is, um, let's see which our first question be, how many episodes were there? Okay, so let's say that's question number one. Then I'm planning on making it a multiple choice, like you'll have four options. So then I'll have another sign, then it'll be like A, uh, 100, B, 120, C, 150, D, 180, Okay, and you'll have four buttons to choose A, B, C, or D. And if you hit D, the D button, then you would be correct. You would get a point. And I'm thinking I'll have 11 questions in total every time I do a trivia. So 11 questions. You would need six wins to win the match. And I might make special bonuses if you get, like, all 11 right. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, yeah, that's the idea. So we're here to kind of figure out some of the components, some of the logic. Uh, there will be some redstone involved, but most of this will be pretty simple by using pistons. Uh, so if you hate redstone, don't worry. We will be using pistons and block movement for a lot of this. It's actually... Pretty simple, I'm, I'm hoping. So uh, let's begin here. So I just made a world backup, so we're free to play some glass or glowstone if we choose without feeling guilty about destroying it after. And uh, we're going to build our different components, figure them out each individually, and then when we get it figured out pretty good, we'll uh, build the th whole thing, put everything together at some other location we choose and hopefully build a nice building for it and that kind of thing. Uh, let's begin here. Our first most important thing will be the memory unit. So we can do this pretty easy using glass and glass, pistons, and redstone. So let's pretend this is our multiple choice. Let's say whatever my question is, the answer is C. This would, this glass block would be A, this would be B, this would be C, and then this would be D. And we can take advantage of a nice little trick. Die. Thank you. A nice little trick we can do with the redstone. So here's something cool about redstone. If you try to send power through a glass block, you can't. But if you try to send power through a solid block, a non-translucent block, like cobblestone, you can. And so that's how I will be programming everything, just using glass blocks and solid blocks. So. Um, what I'll do, I'll have repeaters at all of these, um, two of them will have to have a double, and then we'll have wire like this. And let's try to figure out our, our option switching thing here. 
or multiple choice chooser, I should say. Let's see. So if we were to have four buttons, I kind of want them set out like this, I think. If we were to press this one, and this is how we'll know if we get the right answer. If the one we choose sends power to this wire here, then we got the correct answer. But we need to be careful not to cause our wires to interfere. It's the main challenge. Let's see, what's a better way of doing this? We'll make these ones go up a level. Then we'll cut the wires with a block, I suppose. And then we'll have our panel. And these wires will come out further. So now they all should work, I think. So the correct answer would be C in this case. And you can see it lights up the wire on the other side. And it's the only one that does. So that is how we can do it. So that's one thing figured out. We can make a our chooser like that. I guess selector was the word I was looking for, not chooser. So this is our uh, option selector panel here. I've added a few things here I'll show you. Uh, first of all, I was playing around with the wiring, how I'll uh, do it, because I have some pistons here that'll be operating, and I don't want to hear them operating when I'm, you know, making my choices. So I need our panel here to be at least 16 blocks away from these pistons so that they won't make any noise. So we'll run our wire 16 blocks. And I'm just, I was just uh, trying to find a way to neatly uh, separate our four individual wires here and then rejoin them over here. And this is what I came up with. I got wire, then a torch for one side and then uh, repeater and regular wire and when you cover up uh, these wires it cuts the wires and they stay separate so you notice all these went off now they're all they're all separate so that's how I plan on running them a long distance without them interfering Uh, the other thing I realized, though, is I need another wire here, because uh, right now all we can detect is if we get the right answer, but we need some way of detecting if we got the wrong answer as well. So we'll have another wire underneath our panel, hidden, and that will tell us if we've made a choice. So it could be the right choice, could be the wrong choice, but we need to know if the player has pushed a button. Ah. So that's how we'll figure that out. And then we'll have this wire here tells us if they made the right choice. And we'll have to do something fancy with an AND gate. And we'll get to that later. Uh, this is what else I've been working on. This is uh, my programmable memory array, I guess. Glass blocks are the wrong answer. Cobblestone is the right answer. We got four sets of four pistons controlling everything. And this is a five by, uh, well, five, five, one block in between. One of them has to be an airspace. So in total, we have 11 rows here for our, our planned 11 questions. So it worked out perfect. And in the between all this is our, our, you got the question right wire here. So we can sneak that in, in in the middle there, which is cool. And these four pistons, we'll just have a wire over top. And we'll need to connect them all together. So the way this will work, we'll need to uh, 
So we have the airspace here, so we would have to activate this one. Then this one would go up. Then this one would go right. And then this one would go down. And by doing the, those four switches, we will iterate through one of the questions. So we'll make our choice for the question. We either get it right or wrong. We'll figure that out later. But then we need our next question. So that's what this takes care of. It switches to our next question. And when it gets to the airspace, that means you're done type thing. So that's what I got figured out so far. This is why we're planning it before we actually build it, guys, because I found out a mistake I made here. Uh, first of all, I have this wired now. This button goes, first of all, to these lower ones. Then there is a two torch delay here. goes to this set of pistons. The wire runs up the back, up the stairs there. Spiral staircase. And it activates uh, this top right set. And then another two torch delay here goes to this set here. So it does a full loop. Uh, but what I realize now is that I actually need three air spaces and one of them solid in the corners. So we don't have 11 spots here. We only have... One, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's only nine questions of inf. It's only information for nine questions there. So that won't work. We either need to expand it or cut down our questions. But this is what it does. Apparently nothing. Why isn't that one firing? I'm not giving it enough time, I guess. Because the pistons are still extended when those ones activate. So let's try setting them to four. And that should do the trick, I think. I hope. Maybe three is what we need. There we go. This is a pretty common way of people doing memory now. If you saw that grand piano video, that's that's how they did it. It's cool because in the past you used to have to set up these huge giant redstone tower things just to hold a few bits of information. And now with pistons we can store one bit of information in each block. So it's much, much more compact. And a bit, if you don't know, it's like a, a yes or a no or an on or off. It's uh, two states we can store. So yeah, it's iterating through them. So how would I have to adjust this if I wanted 11? I would need... I guess I would just need to make this two wide instead of one wide, because that would add one extra block there and one extra block down there. So in the final version, that's what I'll do. I'll make uh, it five by t well, five. How would it be? Five by four would be the dimension of the spiraling thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right. I'm right. Yeah. OK. Uh, this thing here is another important problem. It addresses another important problem. Uh, we need a cheat prevention thing because uh, we don't want a player pressing two buttons or all four buttons and always getting the right answers. So that's what this is. Uh, what we'll do is we'll have our wire here, the one that says player pushed a button. It'll go to an RS NOR latch, which again just holds a memory state of yes or no. 
and uh, it'll switch RS nor latch and it'll cause these pistons to retract like that so you'll push your button power will go through this block here through this cobblestone to this wire to your choice whatever and as that's going on this wire will also be sending a signal at the same time and it'll be timed so that as soon as your one signal goes through here it'll switch our RS nor latch which acts much like this lever here and it'll cause these to go up and now if you try to send a signal again like if you try to press two buttons the blocks not there the power can't go th through so you can't make a second choice and then when the final when all the processing is done for the button pressing at the end it will reset the or RS nor latch and this will come down ready for our next question type thing but I can see I'm having a little bit of a problem here these repeater I'm suffering the repeater bug here it looks like possibly no no it's because there's a torch here so I'll have to make a few adjustments yet to fix that uh, this is an example of an RS nor latch just in case you're wondering again it keeps a yes or no state on or off that type of thing uh, I added I added these buttons on so we can switch the state. So if I press that, you see the power goes there. If I press this one, it goes over here. If I press this one several times, it still stays over here. And same with this one. So let's stick up a door just to help you visualize how this works. Our door doesn't want to cooperate. There we go. So this is the, yes, the door is open state when the power is over there. And when we hit this one, it's the no, the door is not open state. So that's what that does. Uh, a lot of people don't understand how this difference, how this is different from uh, lever. I'm stumbling with my words now. I'll demonstrate this to you very simply. Oops. Two wires. There we go. Yes, the door is open state. No, the door is not open state. This is how it differs. There's no way of switching this lever using redstone. If I send power to it, it's still in that state. There's no way of changing it. That's the only difference. That's why we use these when instead of levers at certain times. Okay? Pretty simple. So I just figured out a very important part of our trivia mini game, the logic. Yes, the logic, the thing that determines if we won or lost the question. So here we have the you guessed correctly wire. Now that alone you could use, like if you only needed to know if you won, then this wire would suffice. Uh, but I want to know if we won or lost. And so we need to do some logic figuring here. Because if we lost, that will just stay off. It won't switch. We don't know anything from it. But this one always comes on. It could mean you won or you lost. You don't know. So that's where I set up this example here to demonstrate how to do the logic behind it. What we need to do is... Uh, get those two wires in sync so that they have the exact same delay when they reach a certain point here which is uh, demonstrated by this button here when I press it the two wires come on at the exact same time they're both changed at the same time on the right represents the correct button was pressed wire so that one over here on the left is the any button was pressed wire that button was pressed wire so that's this one here. So if they're in sync, 
we got uh, two AND gates here. This is the one that represents that you won, and this is the one that shows that you lost. Right now, they're both off, like they should be. So if we press this button, it says we won. This light didn't come on, only that one did. So how did that happen? The button was pressed wire came on, that one always comes on, and the correct button was pressed wire came on. So this one only comes on if you guess correctly. So that makes sense, we won. But now, if we were to lose, how would we figure that out? Well, I just put an inverter there so that when the button's pressed, that wire's off. The correct button was pressed, wire's off. And we have an inverted AND gate here. And so what happens? The U lost came on. And the U1 stays off. So it knows, it knows what happened. It knows the truth. And if we have these two separate, we can cause different things to happen depending on whether we win or lost. So if we won, you would probably get a score point added somehow. You might have nope, a note block sequence, play a jelly tune or something. Or if you lose, you might have a note blocks a note blocks a note block sequence play a sad tune like dun 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 you know you have you can get input from whatever condition happened is what happens is what happened it's getting late here i got to stop talking i got to finish this episode ah uh, okay so we have a lot of this figured out now. There's a few minor things to figure out yet. Alright, this is our question list with our possible answers below each question. Question 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. With the, the possible answers directly below the question asked. Uh, I didn't write up any examples for them all. That would take a while. And I was thinking of having the selector panel here. So you'd have your choice. And you should be able to read all of those from here. It's probably a little bit blurry on YouTube, but uh, in the game, you can clearly read them pretty good at this distance. Uh, tell me what you guys think. Is this a good height for it? Is that a good distance back for it? Uh, what should I use for the back coloring? Should I use black wool? Or should I use glowstone? Let me know. I want your input on this since it's for you. And yeah, that's another thing. As we're going through the questions here, there's no way you can possibly expect the player to remember what question they're on. So I will have an indicator above. I think of using glowstone. So if you're on question one, there'll be a glowstone block above that sign. And as you press a button, it would move over one to the right, to question two, and that's how you would keep track. Maybe I'll set up some pistons to see if we can get that working. Here's a visualization to help you understand what I meant. Uh, so there's a glowstone block above question six you would not be able to see anything to the left of here or above here like you wouldn't be able to see the second glowstone block or anything right of here so it would all be covered up nicely neatly and I don't plan on using soil I just that's all I had on me I would probably use something that matches whatever we choose for the back there just so it doesn't stand out and the glowstone does and that's the piston loop going counterclockwise. Let's see it going. And that's how it goes. So, every time you answer a question, it'll go through all that stuff over there, and then it will also 
send power to our our switcher here and that will tell us that we're on the next question so that memory unit will move forward to the next question this thing will show that we move to the next question it'll all be in sync uh, so let me know what you think of that there was one problem with this so I have an odd number of blocks in the loop there's no way of avoiding that I think and that's going to cause a problem because in one of these cases the glowstone's 11 blocks ahead and the other one it's only 10 blocks ahead I think so or 12 blocks ahead I don't know it's off though and it's going to be a problem so I need to find a fix for that and finally the last thing we are going to consider today is the score display this is what I was thinking using redstone torches let me know what you think of this this is how it works got to all these powered and then we're using the same glass and solid block trick and these cycle around using pistons so let's see it work we got one point two points every time you send power to this thing you get a point so the problem is uh, we will be hearing some of this piston noise I don't think it's avoidable like especially if we do this because that's not far away from us at all so there will be some piston noise problem with this thing too is we need to reset it so now it starts going in reverse until it makes it all the way around and it starts over but yeah that's the ideas should be a fun build let me know what you guys think I welcome any feedback you have this is where it resets And yeah, if you have ideas, if you have anything like that, just let me know. Send me video responses. Uh, I would really like help with any note block stuff. I would like to have a, a win, lose, and final victory tune, or final losing tune. Would be cool. Something under 20 note blocks. Under 20 notes would be cool. Or 10, under 10. Yeah. Uh, let me know what you want me to do next episode if you have any opinions. I'm always open for suggestions. You want another odd episode like this, or do you want me working on the hostile mob system again? Let me know. I find all this stuff fun, though, so I'm up for anything. And yeah, that's it for me. Take care. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed this.